All right, all right, all right. Here we go again. What is going on, Haunt Nation? It's me, I'm your boy, Ant. Coming straight at you, not from the side, not from the top, not from underneath, straight at you, with another review. Yes, we've been a little quiet lately. I've been a little quiet lately. Um, doesn't mean we haven't been doing stuff, but Haunt Season has not been around, right? So, not a whole hell of a lot to do, but... Haunt season is back. Uh, basically, the earliest openings that I saw were for Friday, September 13th, which is pretty nice, honestly, giving us, you know, a good half the month of September to actually get out there and do haunts. Uh, unfortunately, there was nothing I could do on the Friday. You know, got to work, got to make money. I do pay for all these things myself. Um, however... Saturday the 14th, which was yesterday, so I will do my damnedest to get this up today, so it doesn't, you know, it's not like Monday or Tuesday, and I'm like, yesterday, Saturday, and then I look like a fucking idiot. Anyway, um, so yesterday was Saturday the 14th, and looking at my available options, I decided to go down to Field of Screams in Mountville, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had no idea that Nightmare at Gravity Hill was open yesterday, so I was thinking about going tonight, but they are not open Sundays. They're only open on one Sunday. So, other than that, very limited. Um, there were some that were open yesterday, like uh, yesterday being Friday, today Sunday. So, Friday. There were some that were open Friday the 13th, uh, like Brighton Asylum, as well as Headless Horseman, but they are not. they were not open Saturday. Or the Sunday so they just kind of doing a Friday the 13th thing they got their stuff done and then rest of the weekend closed I guess um, was also thinking about doing a double um, uh, hitting Jason's woods at the same time same day however they were not open either a lot of stuff opens next week the 21st even more at the end of the month and the beginning of October so still limited but there are still haunts to go to uh, on that note yes I believe Six Flags and Dorney Park are already both open <sighs> um, Dorney doesn't seem as expensive I think it's I think their tickets are like 30 bucks uh, but it is like $30 to park this is also what's killing me and making me not want to go to Six Flags although this year Six Flags does have some intriguing stuff like it seems like they are doing more like a ha uh, Halloween Horror Nights thing where they have like houses based on houses and I say that like very loosely it's usually just you know they put up kind of walls in a random area of the park it's not really in a house I think they have like one that's actually indoors um, but they do have things based on like The Conjuring and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Evil Dead so for me, that's very intriguing. That's something that I'm like, wow, they're actually trying to... It sounds like they're trying to get more professional. Whether or not they will be more professional, I don't know. But the tickets just for their horror event, like I said, they seem like they're going a lot more towards like the Halloween Horror Nights thing. The tickets for their horror event are $65 and entrance starts at 6 o'clock. So no, it doesn't include the whole day at the park. Uh, if you have a regular park day, they will throw you out at 5 o'clock, says so on their website, unless you also have their Halloween park pass. So $65 per person for the park pass, plus another 30 to 40 for parking, plus tax is pretty fucking expensive. So I would suggest that if you're going to go, go with a bunch of friends, load 4, 5, 6, 10, 12 of them up in your car. Everybody can chip in a couple bucks for parking. That kind of takes care of the parking problem money-wise uh, and then you can go through their mazes plus you know it's a one-day thing they have however many mazes if you don't make it through you know there's no coming back the next day you gotta buy another ticket so uh, and they don't guarantee that you'll get through everything either unlike a lot of the haunts that we go to you know when you get there they will guarantee that if you get there on time you go through no such guarantee anyway onwards and upwards right um, talking about the general stuff but we are really here for a review on Field of Screams 
So I've been just I've been to Field of Screams many times before. Um, usually wind up going to it because it is one of the ones that is open earliest, right? I went last season. They were open. They were I believe they were the only thing that I could find that was open. Um, kind of same thing this year. I uh, wanted to go to something on Saturday. Not a lot was open on the Saturday. A bunch of bunch more was open on the Friday. Um, but they were basically all that I saw. So that's what I booked because I'm doing something, right? Haunt season is too short to do nothing. Uh, as always, uh, it, it is in Mountville, PA. Um, there is a store right right by uh, Cold Rudders. They do have like the uh, uh, like the advertisement, you know, kind of leaflet things that that are around a lot of haunts. Um, you know, where they do offer money off per per different day and ticket style. You know, there's a little coupon that you can click there. So if you didn't already buy your tickets online, you can find these there. Head to the box office and get a couple dollars off, which is always nice. Now, <clears throat> um, their ticket prices aren't horrible. I don't remember what I spent. It's a standard fare, somewhere in the you know, $40, $50 range. I did wind up getting $5 off because it was a early first weekend kind of thing. Use that. Obviously, we always pay for our tickets, whether it's me, me and T, whoever. We are always paying for our tickets. We do not normally do not even get solicited for press stuff which is fine um and uh you know i like to go and pay anyway i like to go kind of under the radar you know coming straight at you but when i'm going to the haunts under the radar don't really want too many people to know who we are uh don't advertise it don't go in with cameras and rigs and shit like some of these fucking guys do you know look at me i need attention uh i want to have the same experience you're gonna have Right, I want to have the same experience I was having for years going to these haunts before I was getting, before I was getting, before I was doing any kind of reviews or anything. Uh, I want you guys to know what I experienced and what you can probably expect. You know, so um, parking there is free, is always free, and that's always a welcome thing. I do not like to pay to park my car. Uh, some places are reasonable and they charge a little amount of money, but like I just talked about six flags exorbitant amount of money right so parking is always free which is great uh, you walk up they do have a box office area which is like very nice they they redid that whole area it looks like a big haunted house kind of thing with a ticket booth uh, I wasn't entirely sure let me try that again in English I wasn't entirely sure uh, there have been places and years where even though you have an online ticket you have to turn into a physical saw a security guard there asked him he said no problem if you have a if you have a, a qr code on your phone you can just head right in go straight to the haunts outstanding work didn't have to wait online <clears throat> uh they do still have that bar area that they put up i believe last season chainsaw bar went there had a couple of drinks uh Drinks were roughly $10 and up. I don't think there was anything cheaper. Beers averaged $10 for a nice size cup of beer. Um, other drinks, like 12. I think the blood bags were either 12 or 14. I gotta say, a uh, little disappointed in the blood bags because they were not cold. Uh, that is something that really should be like cold, cold. And they were not cold at all. They were on the verge of being warm. There was a little coolness to them but not cold though when I went back later I did have a beer which was cold uh, the sangria was a little colder than the blood bags but not cold either so take that as you will but the uh, the bartenders were nice there's plenty of food around the park it's all food trucks one of them is accessible from inside that bar area you're not allowed to walk around the park with your with your drink just know that um, and it's 21 and over to get into that area. They will wristband you. They will check ID. Uh, there is one food truck, uh, like corn dogs and that kind of stuff. But if you want the other food, you're going to have to go outside of that bar area to get it. So if you want to eat something and have a beer or a drink, go get your food first. Bring it back into that area. 
buy your beer and be done with it. Uh, they do have a stage. There was a band playing. They were okay. Um, you know, is what it is. Nothing, nothing I was there for. Uh, they had some kind of event going on. I believe it was for some movie. Uh, they had a meet and greet and, uh, and a viewing at some point later on. But those were all add-on ticket stuff. Nothing that really interested me. So I did not do it. Also didn't know how long I was going to be there. I wanted to get through the haunts and not have to leave at some point to go see a movie that I kind of paid a hundred bucks for. So, um, didn't do that. But, whatever. They also had a section closed off, like a VIP section, I would imagine, for those people in that bar area. Um, now, there was absolutely no security there. I mean, there were security guards, but there was no security gate, no wanding, no metal detectors, which is nice. Uh, it is a very, very much a screen park. Uh, all open. The haunts are in a few different areas. There are four. All different areas around the park. Uh, nicely paved walkways. There is a big, big merch stand that sells t-shirts and hoodies and shot glasses and all sorts of things. Uh, bags, creepy bags for women. Um, there are uh, games like uh, like carnival type games, which again I have no real interest in. I'm there for the haunts, but it is nice to see that they have uh, you know a bunch of stuff for people to do. Right? Some people need a break, so what I did was I went to the bar, grabbed a drink, uh, went to uh, the first two haunts, went back and grabbed another drink, then finished out the night with the last two haunts because I have to drive, right? So we're not gonna drive intoxicated, we're not children. So, uh, first haunt I went to was the, Fre I believe it's called Frightmare Asylum. Uh, Frightmare Asylum, as well as Den of Darkness, are their two indoor attractions. Um, they are haunted houses in every sense of the word. They are multi-level. Uh, there are stairs up, stairs down. There are in the den of darkness there are areas where you will have to crawl on the floor crawl around um so be aware there's going to be a little bit of you know physical activity involved um i don't believe it's handicapped accessible at all but you know that is what it is um frightmare asylum and den of darkness i'll cover both of them at the same time because they're houses they're both beautiful inside um uh, really nice well done Hollywood type you know sets uh, actors and actresses inside as well as animatronics uh, all of the actors and actresses I'll say this about all of the haunts were into their in, into their job last night everybody did a great job um, there were some places where it was a little empty we'll get into that we're not there yet but Overall, everyone was into their job. Everyone was doing what they were supposed to be doing. And, you know, it seemed that all of the animatronics were working appropriately. They were going off. Now, here comes the problem I always have with Field of Screams. Uh, more prevalent with Frightmare Asylum. So, how did I choose where I was going to go? Well, I went and I looked and saw where the biggest lines were. Uh, hard to tell the line on the hayride because it's hidden behind you have to kind of get in there to see what the line looks like same thing at their um at their walkthrough which i can't remember the name of uh right now but um yeah for those of you listening and not watching that was a cigar break for a second so how did I pick? I look and I try to see where exactly the biggest lines are and then I avoid those, right? Like a normal person would. So, um, field of oh, screams because I want to know what the damn thing's name is. All right, there we go, attractions. So anyhow, yeah, so, um, uh, Primary asylum was set up like an asylum. Um, not not much more not much more than that to it, like an asylum where they're doing experiments and what have you. Um, like I said, very cool set pieces, really nice, good walkthrough. Uh, line wasn't too long, that's why I chose that one. However, 
what they tend to do at Field of Screams is they tend to put in big groups. So they drop me on a group of six, uh, which is a rather big group. Now we're a group of eight. They had other groups and they put you in queue lines and then each line goes. They were only giving about 30 seconds of lead time from what I could see between lines. So, you know, where are we now? We're conga lining through the haunt because by the time we're two rooms in, our group is caught up to the group in, in front of us. By the time we're four groups in, four, four rooms in, the group behind us is caught up to us. And now we're all walking through single file in a line like a school fire drill together. So for me, you know, I mean, that takes away from the fun of it. It's, it's a lot harder to get scared when you can see people getting scared and things happening, you know, up in front of you, right? It's a lot. It takes away a lot of the surprise element. It's just a lot of noise, a lot of stuff going on. You know, it can be fun watching other people get scared. However, you know, when you're in, when you're in a big group like that, the element of fear tends to dissipate, right? It's a lot more scary when you're by yourself. So I will say that in Frightmare Asylum, I did notice something new. Uh, they were actually splitting people at one point. And then whether or not you caught up to each other later or you just wound up, I mean, you just kind of folded back into the other, into the line of people. You know, it was never like you were really on your own. But they were splitting people up, which was kind of cool. Uh, I do appreciate that, you know. Den of Darkness, again, uh, another another house. We went to that one later where there were less people uh, on the line. Um, and we wound up in a much smaller group. And that, tend, that had the effect of basically going through by ourselves. The group was small. We weren't walking fast, but the other people in the group were walking really slow. Happened to be the first two in the group. Started walking. Really didn't see too many other people throughout the whole haunt. That was luck. That wasn't the haunt doing what I believe they should do and put in smaller groups with longer spacing. That was just luck of the draw. Just happened to get lucky and wind up with slow people in our group, be at the front of the group, and you know, walk slow enough that we weren't running into the people in front of us. Uh, the Hayride is, they do have a Hayride there. Uh, walled Hayride, bundle in. There is a better side and a worse side. So this is the first time I wound up on the facing the front, on the right side of the Hayride. And I can tell you that most of the stuff that was going on was happening behind me. So a little disappointing, uh, better for you if you can get on the left side facing front, you'll see more of what's going on. Um, Hayride hasn't changed too much. My biggest gripe with a Hayride is still my biggest gripe with a Hayride. There is a lot of dead space in between. They, they'll pull you into a into a, an area, the doors will close, stuff will go on, you know. Doors will go up, you move to the next area. In between areas, kind of a lot of dead space. Not a whole hell of a lot going on, and it's just, you know, kind of disappointing. They did put a couple of animatronics in at one or two points. They were there last last season. They're still there, but just, you know, just a lot of dead space in between. Be nicer if they had more things to look at or more actors on the way. Also, with the Hayride, a lot of the chambers that they stop in just seemed understaffed. Only a couple people working, most of them. The clown area one um, was definitely staffed. That, that was by far my favorite one and the most populated by actors. There were probably six-ish, six, maybe eight actors there for that one. Most of the other ones only had a couple of actors, two, three. So, feels a little bit empty. Uh, you know, scenery is still pretty cool. Uh, the there's a there is a tunnel, you know, a spinning tunnel effect, which for me was a miss because we were sitting in the middle to more towards the front on the right side, 
and that would definitely have a better effect if you were in the back of the hayride you know but where we are like you really weren't getting that tilting tunnel effect so much so kind of a miss uh but really that is it for the hayride you know pretty decent not great not terrible uh standard fare i mean it's pretty much the same as it is every year so why did i pull out my why did i pull out my thing right why did i pull out my tablet nocturnal wasteland because i really hate not knowing the name um nocturnal wasteland is their their big you know walk through woods walk that had probably the longest line of the entire night the line was really long um that doesn't open until 7 p.m i'm pretty sure the the whatchamacallit the hayride doesn't open until 7 p.m either which makes sense i mean you know you want to do these things in the dark not with the sun beaming down on you it kind of takes away the the horror effect yeah so they they i saw something in one of their ads so i'm not really ruining anything by telling you that they they added a plane to their nocturnal wasteland like a crash plane which i was really excited about because at haunted hoochie they also have a crash plane which you get to walk through um this crash plane however is there but you don't really get to walk through it you don't really interact with it at all you just kind of go around it which is still cool it's cool to see um but just kind of like i was like oh uh, thought there'd be more since we advertised the crash, the crash plane. But guess what? There isn't. Smoke break again, boys and girls. Um, so that said, um, the line was really long. Again, they queue you up in, in big queues and send you in in groups. I think the group uh, was, again, like five or six other people. Um, not as bad, in my opinion, during a, during the woods walk to have a group like that. I mean, it kind of is like a walk through the dark woods. I don't know. It just seems worse when you're in a, when you're in a house than it does when you're out in a woods walk. I know that sounds contradictory. I still think it would be better. I've been on that walk myself when there's been nobody there near the end of the night and I've kind of gone through my, on my own and it was fantastic. Um, not to say that it took anything away from it with the other people there, but again, really nice. They do their woods walk, their woods walk well. It really does look like a wasteland scenario, you know, post-apocalyptic. All the actors that were there were in character and trying. Um, there were, you know, graveyard scene and things of that nature and some animatronics and whatever. My biggest disappointment with the woods walk would be that there is a full-size Tesla coil there. I mean, full-size Tesla coil there, and it just was not on. Why? I don't know. But it was not on. Because I, I don't know if you've ever seen a Tesla coil. I don't know if you've ever seen one actually operating. You know, but they are really... It, it's really, really cool. Something to behold. You know, the electricity going from the coil to the fencing around it, and the crackling, and the... It's just... it's. I nerd shit but it's really really cool to see but it was there just not working not on I mean I don't kind of blame them because in this economy electric electricity prices are through the fucking roof and I don't know what it costs to operate but I can't imagine that it's cheap so maybe it's a it's an economic thing maybe not I'm sure they make plenty of money off their ticket sales uh, I know I've had people say that they only use volunteers and whatever I don't know I don't know about the economics of that place. I know what they charge for tickets. I can see the size of the crowds. So I know they make money. Where they where that money goes and how they spend it, who knows. Uh, they do make you sign a voucher before you go in, which is a thing at many, many places now. I guess there have been a lot of people twisting ankles or running, in, you know, running scared and running into walls. I don't know, but that is becoming quickly becoming standard fare around the whole of the industry is signing a waiver before they'll let you enter you can do it online if you buy your on online tickets um again with the online tickets just have the qr code on your phone you walk up they use what looks like a phone to scan your qr code that give you the thumbs up and you walk right in easy peasy lemon squeezy um now what else was i going to talk about oh 
just a just a tip for everybody um do what i do i'm sure a lot of you do already so you're gonna be like of course we fucking do it we're not idiots uh just take a take a screenshot if you get the qr code you know you get your you get your ticket when you get your ticket take a take a screenshot of your qr code a lot of these places are out in the middle of nowheresville and uh you know you may have a hard time bringing up that email or whatever you have your ticket on and you may not you know you may have some trouble accessing it why go through that hassle when you can just screenshot the ticket the qr code have it on your phone just you know go into your go into your photo app and just show them the qr code that's what i do that's what i've been doing for years because it is a real pain in the ass when you get somewhere where you just don't have a wi-fi signal or you don't have a cell phone signal and that is your ticket um i don't think anybody still prints out tickets at home but i guess you could do that as well if you wanted to or you could just buy them at the box office so bathrooms around the site are all part of hotties um only thing i think that would make them in an even more legitimate screen park is if they actually put up real bathrooms with working plumbing so you could wash your hands they did have hand wash stations a couple of them that i saw around um and they did have hand sanitizer around as well but i know especially for the lady folk porta potties are not the ideal right for us guys like whatever you know we're just there to take care of business but all in all good night i did not have a bad time they do also have i wouldn't say line creepers but they have you know wandering monsters let's call them uh walking around around the screen park so they're not haunting a line like they would in a traditional one-shot haunted house they are kind of just wandering around the park there to scare anybody that kind of you know gets in their way uh clowns and chainsaw guys and whatever and yes there were plenty of people running and screaming and hiding uh, they do offer a vip fast pass um, there were signs all over the park for upgrades for about $15, which is not terribly expensive in the grand scheme of things. Um, I think, again, going back to Six Flags, I think their VIP Fast Pass was $100 in addition. You know, it was $99 in addition to their ticket. So, treat that for what it is. So, all in all, though, uh, especially for the first haunt of the season, it was a really good haunt. It always is a really good haunt. My gripes remain the same, you know, it's it's all about the spacing and the lines. You know, some of the best I've ever seen was at Bain. They would only put you in in a group of two, maybe four if you really, really begged them, but usually they'd only put you in as a one or two. You went in and you were kind of on your own. That increases that scare factor for a lot of people. I'd say most people. Um, and then they'd give good lead time in between groups as well. Um... Uh, this one, not so much. Really short lead time, really big groups. For me, it detracts from the whole thing. Uh, you know, well, you know, what can I tell you? I just don't, I don't think that's the best way to run it, but I'm sure that's the way they're going to run it, especially early in the season. When you don't have that many people, you have more of an opportunity to put fewer people in at once. But that said, it was and always is a good haunt. I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10. I really do like that place. Um, it is a fun time. It's always a good time. I just think, you know, they could they could be better. They could hit an 8. They could hit an 8.5 if they fixed if they fixed their line problem. That's that's what I'm going to call it. Now, on a separate thing, I'm going to show for my buddy. My buddy runs a hot sauce company called Coney Island Saucery. My man Aaron, give Aaron a shout out if you ever see him. He does uh, hot sauce events around. This is his newest sauce. This is Fallout hot sauce. It is a pineapple habanero-ish sauce. It's really nice. He says it's a rad level of five on the sauce, the bottle, and the bottles are very interesting. They always have clever things going on on the labels. Uh, the sauce is actually really good. I wouldn't, you know, friend or no friend, if his sauce sucked, I'd be like, yeah, guy. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him a shout out or an advert. These bottles also right now glow in the dark. So if I were to hold this one up to the light and be in a dark room, you would see some glow in the dark elements of the bottle, which I think is really, really cool. Um, the bottles are numbered. I think they were a limited numbered edition. 
as well. So if there are any collectors out there. But like I said, if you like hot sauce, this is his newest sauce. He's also got three other sauces um, that have that are themed around the uh, Trailer Park Boys. Uh, if you've seen it, I believe it's on Netflix. I think it's a great show. I think it's brilliant, honestly. Um, three more sauces around that. Um, ConeyIslandSaucery.com. You can get them there. There are they're in a couple of small uh, supermarkets, I believe, but not not a ton, not a, not everywhere. That's a whole other issue. Um, he does have a new sauce that he is working on that it is not quite ready to come out yet. I mean, the sauce is ready, but it's not quite ready to come out yet. I'm not going to talk about that because I can't. Um, don't want to get him in trouble and subsequently me in trouble with him because he is my friend. But yeah, if you like hot sauce, give it a try. Check it out. I enjoy it. I think it's really good. Um, but other than that, man, like I said, Field of Screams, 7 out of 10. Uh, not too many places open tonight, tonight being Sunday, so I don't know if I'm going to be going anywhere tonight, which is kind of disappointing for me. I uh, contemplated Six Flags, but I really don't know if I want to spend two plus hours driving there and then spend over $100 just to walk into the place. You know, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say it's going to be a probably not. But anyway, stay tuned. Uh, the season has just started. Many, many more coming soon. Uh, two weeks. T and I are going to be out at Headless Horseman Hayride, so uh, two weeks from yesterday, on the Saturday, we will be out there. We got early tickets, 7 o'clock, so if you see us, come say hi, you know, and uh, you know, we'll give you a shout out on the review. I have high hopes, very, very high hopes, not really, but I have, I have hopes. Yeah, they were good last season. Anyway, until next time, everybody, 